biofuels. Now you can't talk about biofuels without referring to global warming, which, as you'll be well aware, is due to increasing levels of CO2 and methane in the atmosphere. It's causing this rise in global temperatures, and even a small rise can have really significant effects on the environment. They can cause a big shift in climate, and all the storms that we've had over the winter of 2013-2014 have finally been accredited to global warming, to climate change, and it can cause a rise in sea levels as well. So carbon sequestration is something that's been on the political agenda. Now to sequester something means to put it away in isolation or seclusion. So the idea is to store carbon where it can't disturb the environment. Now CO2 is a soluble gas. It can be sequestered in large bodies of water and of course it's locked up in rocks as calcium carbonate, in wood, in fossil fuels, that sort of thing. There's actually about 50 times as much CO2 dissolved in the oceans as is present in the atmosphere. And there's actually conversations going on about dumping CO2 in the deep oceans rather than allow it into the atmosphere. Now the effect of global warming upon living organisms is that some are losing their habitats because some regions are becoming warmer or drier or windier or they're changing essentially. Now some species have had to shift their distribution, they've had to move to new regions. Some of them have changed their patterns of behaviour. They've changed their migration patterns, for example, maybe the timing of migration or the timing of their egg laying or the flowering of flowering plants. It can also cause reduction of biodiversity. Now biodiversity is the range of species present in a habitat. Now this is important because uh, conserved organisms may have future uses, so we need to conserve biodiversity as much as possible. Let's have a look at how biogas is made. Biogas is made by the fermentation, or the, that means anaerobic respiration, of biomass, or manure, or waste material containing carbohydrates, and it's known as slurry. Now it must be kept in anaerobic conditions, because if it is, then it produces methane. If it isn't kept in anaerobic conditions, then it doesn't, it produces something else. Now, why must oxygen be excluded? Now, if you've got carbohydrates which are being respired aerobically, then you're going to end up with the normal products of aerobic respiration, which are what? I'll leave you to think about that. CO2 and H2O. And we don't want to make CO2 and H2O, we want to make methane. So oxygen must be excluded for us to get the methane, which is the product that we're after. Now, this mixture of slurry must be kept at the optimum temperature, the best temperature, because it's microbes that do all the work. It's the microbes which are carrying out the anaerobic respiration. So it needs to be kept reasonably warm for these microbes to respire away. So quite often these biogas fermenters are buried in the ground because that helps to insulate them and keep them warmer. Now, when you first set up your biogas digester, there may be some oxygen present at the start. So it may be that for the first few days or for the first few weeks, you're going to have aerobic respiration taking place, which means that your products in the initial stages may be carbon dioxide and water. So sometimes it will take a few days or a few weeks for you to start getting your desired product, which is methane. So the different biogas digesters may be of different designs. This one just shows that you might have a stirrer in there which will mix up the slurry and prevent it forming layers so that the microbes are evenly distributed and the substrate, the carbohydrates, are evenly distributed. That can help to speed up the reaction. Now the used up slurry that's been digested will be removed at regular intervals and that can be used as a soil improver. It's a bit like compost. And you can see the gas will collect in the dome-shaped space at the top and that will sometimes have gas cylinders connected to collect up the gas 
or a tap of some sort so you can collect the methane.